In this video we are going to talk about Top 5 Bizarre Missing Person Cases Part 3. So before starting this video like this video and subscribe to Crime Maze YouTube channel for future updates. According to the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, there are approximately 90,000 missing people in the United States at any given time. Many of these mysterious disappearances have been solved thanks to scientific advances such as genealogy testing, but many more remain unsolved and will likely remain so. Indeed, not all families will be able to find some sort of resolution. For over a decade, the family of Madeline McCann has been looking for answers in their toddler's unsolved disappearance. The top 5 strange missing person cases are listed here. Number 5. Amy Lynn Bradley. Amy Lynn Bradley, 23, went missing while on a Caribbean cruise in 1998. Her father last saw her around 5 a.m. on the balcony of her stateroom. She was nowhere to be found when he awoke at 6 a.m. From top to bottom, the ship was searched. Nothing was discovered. She did not fall overboard or commit suicide, according to investigators. In 1999, a member of the U.S. military came forward to say that while visiting a brothel, he spoke with a woman who identified herself as Amy Bradley. He claimed she requested assistance, but she was whisked upstairs before he could ask any questions. For several months, he kept this information hidden from the authorities. The brothel had vanished by the time he came forward and police were dispatched to the scene. Amy's parents showed a photo they got on the Dr. Phil show in 2005. It featured a woman who looked like Amy posing on a bed in trashy lingerie. She appeared unkempt and probably drugged. Amy's parents suspect she may have been kidnapped and forced into sexual slavery. Amy's safe return is being offered a $250,000 reward. Number 4. Harold Holt. Harold Holt was Australia's 17th Prime Minister. Harold was an accomplished diver and swimmer. He was noted for his athleticism and endurance. Harold vanished on December 17, 1967, while relaxing and swimming with his family and friends at Cheviot Beach. Harold was not recovered, despite the beginning of one of Australia's largest rescue attempts. Many feel he died as a result of foul play, while others say he died as a result of the elements or a medical problem. A new prime minister was sworn in when Harold was presumed deceased. Harold was survived by his wife, Zara, and three children. He was a passionate swimmer, so a swimming complex was dedicated in his honor. Many Australians find this memorial strange because he drowned while swimming and has a swimming pool named after him. Number 3. Tara Calico. Tara Calico, 19, said her goodbyes to her mum and went for a little bike ride. She disappeared without a trace. Her damaged Walkman case was discovered along the side of the road as the only piece of evidence. Witnesses claimed they spotted a van following her, but detectives found nothing else. A mystery photograph was discovered in the parking lot of a convenience store less than a year later, in 1989. Two shackled children were photographed in the back of a windowless van. Their mouths are taped up and they have a worried expression on their faces. The girl resembled Tara so closely that her mother mistook her for her daughter. The book My Sweet Audrina by V.C. Andrews was next to the girl in the picture. Tara's favorite book was this one. Was it purchased by her captor or was it set there as part of a dark and twisted brainwashing plot? In 2013, a task team was formed to investigate the disappearance of Tara Calico. Nothing has turned up so far but her family remains hopeful that Tara will be found alive and they will be reunited one day. Number 2. Louis Mackerley. On June 7, 1984, Louis Mackerley was last seen in Allentown, Pennsylvania. He told his babysitter when he got home from school that he was going to play with pals two doors down from his family's house in the 300 block of Chew Street in the afternoon. Lewis entered Marco's doggy shop around 4 p.m. and spent about 45 minutes waking up and browsing the store, according to the owner. He claimed he was in the store to get away from two teen boys who were supposedly chasing him. He headed east on Gordon Street that afternoon, leaving the store around 4.45 p.m. Witnesses said they spotted Lewis wandering between 4th and Gordon Streets, roughly a block away from his home in the 360 block of Chew Street. Lewis's parents believe he was walking to an old woman's home on Chew Street, 
which he enjoyed visiting. The two boys who were following Lewis that day were questioned by authorities, but they are not suspected of being involved in his disappearance. Lewis was observed chatting to an unnamed male and female in a park near Jordan Creek, according to sources. This was about a one-block walk from his home. Authorities have not ruled out the possibility of this happening, despite the fact that the news has not been confirmed. Something happened to Lewis that day, according to authorities. Both of Lewis's parents were subjected to lie detector tests and were cleared out as suspects early on in the inquiry. Rumors circulated that they had harmed or neglected Lewis, but child services examined the allegations but found that they were unfounded. Authorities believe his disappearance may have been caused by an unidentified pair. Lewis notified his parents and the school nurse and psychologist in January 1984 that he had been assaulted by an anonymous couple known as Frank and Elizabeth. Although his stories of the incident changed, it's plausible that there were multiple attacks. They abused him on the railroad tracks, he claimed. He further said that they brought him to an apartment and abused him before returning him to his street. They threatened to harm him if he notified anyone about the incident, he claimed. While the police were notified of the attacks, no investigation could be conducted because Lewis could not offer the last names of his alleged attackers or any other information. It's unclear if they were involved in Lewis's disappearance. Authorities suspect Lewis was kidnapped on the day he went missing. In 1988, a man named David Riggs reported that he formed Search 7 to 8 in the search for missing children, including Lewis. He was arrested and charged with accosting seven young boys in West Virginia and offering them money in exchange for wearing bikini underwear. The boys, on the other hand, did not accept his offer. Number 1. Maria Des Los Angeles Martinez. Maria Des Los Angeles Martinez called into a Phoenix, Arizona radio station on October 12, 1990, to advertise her babysitting services. The station was then approached by a caller who needed Maria's services for the next day since he had children and needed a babysitter. Maria was soon picked up outside her house by an unknown male caller. Maria's parents received a phone call from Maria requesting that they come and retrieve her a few minutes later. Her phone was disconnected before she could give them her location. Maria was never seen or heard from after that. Who was this mysterious caller? What happened to Maria? The caller's identity was unknown to the radio station. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.